So as um, Helen said, I'm the Director of Research at Cure Parkinson's. For those of you who are unfamiliar with us, we were founded in 2005, so next year will be 20 years of activities. And the screen's doing funny things again. Sorry. Um, I'll look at that screen up there, that way I'm looking at the folks at home. Um, it was started by four gentlemen who had been diagnosed with Parkinson's and they're very supportive wives. They weren't interested in um, better care, they wanted a cure for the condition. And so the, they set up this charity and it was a focus on encouraging and funding and facilitating research focused on slowing, stopping or reversing Parkinson's, uh, most importantly with urgency for people living with the condition. And we do this both clinically and preclinically, and all of our research is funded, uh, excuse me, is, um, is evaluated by a committee of um, experts and people living with Parkinson's. There are 18 individuals, um, they evaluate grants, that, uh, grant applications that come to us four times a year. And um, the, uh, the grant evaluation committee was um, being chaired by Professor Alistair Coles. He's from the multiple sclerosis field, but um, his term has just come to an end and uh, next um, spring update meeting, we'll be seeing a different face in the chair position there. But I just also wanted to point out our two uh, young interns, um, Andrew and Chung, uh, this year, one of the trust, um, trustees of the charity suggested we offer early career researchers an opportunity to get some experience um, with the grant evaluation process, and we came up with the intern system where we um, put, asked for applications from early career researchers, PhD students and postdocs to um, spend one year on the committee, attend four meetings. The first meeting you're just observing, the second meeting you're part of the discussion, the third meeting you are a, the second presenter on a, on a grant application, and then in the final meeting, which is an in-person meeting, you are actually uh, the primary presenter. And both of them um, were in actively involved in the whole process all the way from the start and they've really been exemplary. Uh, they've set a very high bar for next year's um, um, interns, but um, a really rewarding process, not just for themselves, but also for us. And this committee, as I said, they meet four times a year and what they do is they receive applications, they evaluate them, if they feel that they fall within remit, that is within five years of um, clinical testing for preclinical work and of a disease modifying nature, those are our two criteria. They will send them out for peer review. Expert peer reviewers will look at the, will look at the applications, go through them and determine their um, strengths and weaknesses. And with that information at the next meeting, the grant evaluation committee will make a decision as to whether to recommend funding or not to fund to the trustees. A clicker, ooh, and a laser, yes. Um, so, um, so, so that's one of the committees that we have here at Cure Parkinson's. We also have a second committee. Um, there we go, clicker works. And that's our International Clinical Trials Committee. So this group of individuals, uh, this is, there's 25 um, experts in Parkinson's in this group and uh, a number of um, Parkinson's advocates as well, people living with a condition who are interested in the um, research going on, and then um, supporters, etc. Together for a two day face to face meeting every year at which we present them with a set of dossiers, typically 15 to 20 dossiers. The dossiers are a phone book size um, booklet involved, that includes everything we know about specific molecules that we think there's evidence for disease modification. And the committee's task is to um, evaluate and rank which of those should go forward for clinical testing in Parkinson's. And the program's been running for 13 years now, and it's um, been associated, at, well, 71% of our um, funding has been um, awarded to um, projects investigating I ILCT um, evaluated molecules. Uh, it's associated with 20 um, completed trials and 21 ongoing studies. And um, 10 of these uh, ILCT associated clinical trials have been funded through a partnership that we have with the Van Andel Institute, where our friends in Grand Rapids, Michigan. The meeting is either held here in the UK or it's held in Grand Rapids, Michigan at the Van Andel Institute. And we greatly, um, greatly appreciate their support. And the program at the present looks a bit like this. 
So where the, where you have the cure Parkinson's uh, symbol is where we are directly funding. We had directly contributed funding towards the program. Um, and I'm not going to go through every single one here, but what we will just highlight is the azathioprine, this drug here, and nicotinamide riboside, the NOPARC study. It's a phase three study in Norway. Both of those studies will be um, reporting uh, next year. Azathioprine is a predecessor to the DAPA, um, DAPA study uh, that um, Bina will be talking about uh, today. And um, nicotinamide riboside is um, a supplement that's being evaluated, as I said, in uh, Norway at the moment. Both of those studies will report results next year, hopefully. Today, though, we'll be looking at this drug here, exenatide, which is a diabetes um, treatment, and dapensutril, which is a new drug, a new chemical entity, as they're called. Um, but it's an inflammatory agent that is um, going to be tested in the Parkinson's cohort. Um, and if there is anyone interested, I'll stand back from the QR code. This is a review of 12 years of ILCT program. Um, where we go through the, um, we try to provide a review of the process and in the supplemental um, files, we also provide a list of all the uh, drugs that have been, the non-confidential drugs that have been evaluated by the committee over, those time, over that time. Um, but going back, one of the, what, again, one of the important um, features of our program is that uh, word urgency. And we are always looking at trying to speed up the, uh, the testing and development of ILCT evaluated drugs. And one of the projects that's doing this at the moment is being conducted by Professor Heather Mortisboy at um, Sheffield University. She's going through the top 100 molecules that have been evaluated by the ILCT committee and, uh, and testing them in cell cultures, looking at the mechanism of action and um, trying to prepare them trying to identify biomarkers or measures of target engagement that could be used in a clinical trial. We also have another program in-house called the ILCT um, Research Acceler Pipeline Acceleration Program. That's where if a molecule is of interest to the ILCT committee, but they don't think it's strong enough to prioritize at present, they will put it forward as an ILCT um, Research Pipeline Acceleration Molecule. And that's where we put out an open call for research to be done, a particular piece of research to be done on that drug in the um, next 12 months. And um, this year we have um, funded um, Dr. Puna Faku. I am not going to try and, whoops, I'm not going to try and pronounce the name of the place where she's from. My dyslexic, my dyslexic brain is not, gonna, is not that good. But she is looking at two molecules that have been evaluated by the ILCT committee that they thought they, we need more research on. This is probucol and chlorogenic acid. And then it's an 18 month study. So it's a very, um, quite a rapid turnaround study for um, this type of preclinical work. And again, um, uh, Sinead O'Sullivan in Germany, she is looking at carnosic acid, another um, ILCT pipeline acceleration program award winner. Uh, and again, that's another um, 18 month study. And we're also funding research for molecules that are not necessarily repurposable, but new chemical entities. And an example of this that we've just recently contracted is for a molecule called CP6, which is an anti-inflammatory agent. It's been developed by Cree um, Pharmaceuticals. Uh, they are working with the University of Pittsburgh, uh, testing this molecule in um, some alpha-synuclein models of Parkinson's. Then we move to the clinical work. Recently, um, we've contracted um, a clinical trial that's been conducted at the University of Buffalo in New York. And this is looking at low dose lithium. Lithium is typically used for bipolar disorder, but if you, um, very low levels have been found to be neuroprotective. And um, Professor Thomas Gutuso, um, Gutuso has, um, is conducting a clinical trial, a phase 1B clinical trial involving 35 people with Parkinson's being tested with this for 24 weeks, uh, low dose lithium versus um, placebo. And a lot of his, um, a lot of what he's looking at are um, blood based biomarkers and brain imaging outcomes. This will hopefully provide the support, the data to support a much larger study going forward if he sees uh, positive signals here. 
Then we also have the um, Aspro PD study. This is the Ambroxol to slow Park Parkinson's progression. And uh, this is being led by Professor Anthony Shapiro at UCL um, here in London. It's um, a nationwide study. It's going to be a phase three clinical trial involving two years of um, treatment with Ambroxol, which is a respiratory medication that is widely used across Europe, but it's not actually licensed here in the UK. And it, um, at quite high doses, it's been found to elevate an important enzyme involved in the biology of Parkinson's. And there was a uh, initial phase 2A st study that provided positive results in terms of looking at blood and cerebral spinal fluid, which is the, the liquid that your brain sits in. And he saw after six months of this treatment, they had elevated this particular enzyme, uh, the activity of this enzyme. And they thought this is encouraging enough that we should go to a phase three study. This will be 330 um, individuals, half of whom will be carrying a particular genetic variation for Parkinson's that puts you at risk of Parkinson's. And the primary endpoint will be improvement in um, Parkinson's clinical uh, motor score uh, or clinical rating scale scores. Oh, and the, just to add to this, we've just recently put out an update uh, regarding the um, progression of the um, setup of the study. And the um, trial is hopefully going to start recruiting in January, the final testing of the um, drug, just to make sure, just to tick all the boxes is being conducted at the moment. And if everything goes, goes according to plan there, the drug will be shipped to the recruitment centers in January, and that'll initiate the start of recruitment. Then next year, we also have the um, ACT PD, the EJS, EJS ACT PD program that will be kicking off. Um, Professor Fultonay is one of the key PI principal investigators on that project. And um, we can ask him questions this afternoon about that if you're interested. This is the Edmund J. Safra Accelerating Clinical Trials in Parkinson's. It's going to be a multi-arm, multi-stage clinical trial, which is kind of um, what's happening here. You will have a single placebo arm and you'll be measuring multiple agents against that single placebo arm. And the beauty of this will be that if an agent is considered is identified as not working halfway through the study, you will stop it and you'll, you can introduce a new molecule in, in its place. So there'll just be a continuous conveyor belt, hopefully, of testing, clinic, of testing new therapies for Parkinson's, particularly disease modification in Parkinson's. And as one, hopefully, if one of these gets to the final finish line and the regulator says, this is now going to be part of clinical um, treatment, then all of a sudden that becomes standard of care. Everybody in the trial will start taking it and you'll be looking for iterative improvements um, in each step. And that is what this slide here hopefully shows you. So you have a single placebo versus multiple treatments. Treatment number two, treatment number three were found not to work at the uh, interim analysis. They were replaced by treatment number four and treatment number five, while treatment number one just goes all the way through to um, completion. That is hopefully the way forward for us. And we're not the only ones here in the UK doing this. Uh, MAMS platforms are being designed and set up across um, multiple continents. We've got the Hydra trial getting set up in um, Norway, and the, uh, the NS Park trial getting set up in France. Australia has the Australian Parkinson's mission. Norway also has a Sletnia trial, which is going to be a very small, a very fast kind of MAMS where they'll be testing drugs over a short period of time, 12 weeks to identify biomarkers that can be used in the larger MAMS platform over a longer period of time. And then you've also got an interesting um, MAMS platform that's being set up in America called P2P by the Michael J. Fox Foundation that will be looking at people who are in what's called prodromal PD. So these are people who have, um, before they've been formally diagnosed with Parkinson's, but they're showing the, the, the signs of, of risk of developing the condition such as acting out your dreams, uh, what's called RBD, REM sleep behavior disorder, um, and loss, sense, loss of sense of smell. These, these individuals will be treated before they're actually diagnosed. And the idea here is to actually stop Parkinson's before it's, um, it manifests itself. 
Um, now, if you're interested in all of what I've said, we put out a report every year. This is the um, clinical trial pipeline with uh, Prof Dr. Professor Dr. Kevin McFarthing. Um, Kevin is a research advocate um, who lives with Parkinson's himself, and a number of other um, advocates are involved as well. You have Sue Buff and Gary Raffaloff. I didn't have a good picture of Ken, so you just you'll, you'll have to excuse me. But the ladies, the likeness is very similar. And then we also have um, Brian Fisk on board as well. Brian is the um, director of research at the Michael J. Fox Foundation, and uh, we couldn't do this without him. And what uh, the, the output of this is we look at all the drug trials that are currently ongoing for Parkinson's, and we get this large um, bullseye or um, wagon wheel. Um, and you're looking at different phases of clinical testing here, phase one, phase two, phase three. Uh, for this is disease modifying therapies and this is symptomatic therapies. And the goal for us is to increase the size of the phase three um, space here, which is the last step before you actually get to regulatory approval for clinical use. So in summary, um, quite a busy year for Cure Parkinson's. Uh, we've got a lot of preclinical research now funded and contracted. We have a number of clinical trials ongoing or starting, and we've got um, quite a few clinical trial results coming through in the next um, couple of years. And I think I'll stop there, and I want to say thank you to all our supporters, and particularly thank you to um, the guys in the research team um, who are the true brains of the operation.